Let's begin with a prayer. Lord Jesus, Almighty God, illumine your word for us this morning that we might find new meaning for our lives. Accompany us with your presence. Challenge us with your teaching. Comfort us with your forgiveness. Surprise us with your love. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. He had never seen anything like this. High school football coach Jimmy Nolan had just left affluent Laguna Beach High School to coach a start from scratch football team in a rough section of Los Angeles. Their gang shootings and urban blight made fielding a team just about impossible, let alone coaching one. Coach Nolan, a self-confessed idealist, was determined to try. In his first week as coach of the Compton High Centennials, a group of 50 kids showed up for practice. As often was the case, the local stadium was locked tight and there was no equipment in sight. The coach and his recruits scaled the wrought iron fences of the stadium grounds and lined up orange cones to mark where the line should be. They began warm-up sprints and tackles. They had a lot of work to do. Nolan had never seen anything like this. He was asleep on his mat when his brothers came to wake him up. Wake up! Wake up! Jesus of Nazareth is back in Capernaum. We are taking you there. We've got to leave now. We'll try to beat the crowds and carry you as best we can. Shaken from his sleep, he could hardly believe it. He had heard of this man, Jesus, this faith healer, but he thought it was all just talk. He knew he would never walk again. It was impossible. He'd been crippled all his life. He rolled over and closed his eyes. But his brothers and their friends came to lift him up where he lay on his sleeping pallet. They lifted him up on their shoulders like a boat ready to launch. They carried him out of the house as the sun began to rise. They set out together, taking turns carrying the young man, treating the sleeping pallet like a stretcher. First, his brothers carried him, then some friends took their place, and other neighbors would spell them. The paralyzed man was astounded. He had never left the house, let alone the town. Now they were going to Capernaum. He had never seen anything like this. It was afternoon by the time they reached Capernaum. They found the house where Jesus was speaking from the size of the crowd. There was no way to get anywhere close to him. The friends were discouraged. They kicked at the dirt. They grumbled about the crowd. They noticed some scribes from the synagogue had planted themselves close to the doorway, sitting cross-legged, blocking the way. Finally, one of the brothers saw a ladder at the corner of a building nearby and a great coil of rope on the ground near it. Suddenly, he had an idea. Come with me, he shouted. This way, we're going around back and then up on the roof. Together, they carefully placed the ladder against the house and the strongest brother carried the paralytic up it. He carried him over his shoulder with gentleness. The others brought the pallet up and together they had laid their disabled friend on it again. And meanwhile, two others were digging furiously at the packed earth on the rooftop above the place where Jesus was addressing the crowds. 
Hurry, they shouted to each other. They were almost through. Even the paralytic was getting excited. He could feel something special was happening. They were so determined, almost desperate to get him to Jesus. He had never seen anything like this. I knew it would be difficult to coach here, Nolan said to a sports reporter for the LA Times. That's why I took the challenge. The challenge meant feeding, outfitting, and building up a team from a collection of troubled youth. The biggest problem is hunger, Nolan said. A lot of kids were getting dizzy, forgetting assignments. It turns out a lot of them had not eaten all day. The reporter wrote in his regular sports column the story of Coach Nolan's discovery about his troubled team and how he addressed it. It was simple. He asked for help. Coach Nolan sent emails to everyone he knew and to all the local businesses, over 2,000 people. He asked for water, food, cleats and shoulder pads. Incredibly, it worked. Someone sent in cases of water, another brought cleats, another peanut butter in bulk. The players had never seen anything like this. Yet something was still missing. One afternoon, Coach Nolan called the team together and sat them down. He asked the kids to talk to him about how they were doing about how their lives were going and what they were struggling with, what was important to them. Slowly, one by one, the kids began to talk. One boy admitted he was homeless and lived in a friend's garage. Another's family was in the process of being evicted. A third was trying to keep himself and his sister away from the gangs. Each story was unique. But they all shared one thing in common. They all felt like the Compton Centennial football team was the only stable and loving environment in their lives. He had never seen anything like this. In no time, his friends had opened up the roof. His four brothers looped the rope carefully around the foot and head of the pallet where he lay. He held on tightly while they lowered him down on it like a coffin into the ground. In the dark room, dusty from all the digging, Jesus received the man. He saw the faces of his family grinning down from the roof. He saw their faith. Jesus looked down lovingly at the paralyzed man as he spoke to him. My dear child, your sins are forgiven. As the man's eyes met those of Jesus, something moved in his heart. But his legs remained lifeless. Somehow, forgiveness was not what he had expected. Then Jesus turned away and said something angrily to the scribes sitting outside. Yet the scribes had not spoken. He had never seen anything like this. Then Jesus looked again at the paralyzed man. He spoke even more gently this time. I say to you, rise up, take your mat, and go to your home. And now, without taking his eyes off Jesus, he rose up somehow. He picked up his mat and he walked. The people were amazed. They gave glory to God. They said, we have never seen anything like this. Have you? Have you ever seen anything like this? We come together as a church community every Sunday to worship God. But when was the last time anyone busted their way in here? 
through the roof. Maybe it's Jesus who comes busting in, God's in-person visit, the gift of grace. Many of us have felt the love of Christ, experienced God deeply at work in our lives, be it a close call or a near-death experience, or simply acknowledging the many blessings we have received and the privileges we enjoy. These gifts of grace from God empower us somehow, quite miraculously, to share God's love with others. Maybe it's volunteering at the Community Resource Center or helping with the midnight run, delivering food and making dinners for the hungry at hope. Just think of all the things we do for the love of God. Are we crazy? We're just convinced that love is the answer and our carrying out Christ's mission here in town is no less than Christ's love on legs. Yet there is more to this story. Listen to what happens next. The man who a few moments ago was paralyzed is standing now. He is carrying his mat stiffly under one arm. Time seems to have stood still. He is filled with emotion, his steps forward hesitantly toward the door. The crowd has gone wild with joy. They are on their feet, cheering and thanking God. But as he approaches them at the doorway, he cannot get out. The scribes are still sitting there. They do not stand and rejoice with the people. They remain seated by the doorway, blocking the way as if they themselves were paralyzed still stewing about the blasphemy they heard from the lips of Jesus. Who is he to forgive sins anyway? They murmured in their hearts. Only God can do such a thing. Have you ever seen anything like this? So stuck in their ways, they blocked the healed one now trying to find his way. Are we like that sometimes, too? So stuck in our ways? Like in South L.A., when the L.A. Times sports writer who reported on the story of Coach Nolan's struggling high school football team wanted to write a follow-up article. The Compton Centennial team, with some donated equipment and food and the extra attention from Coach Nolan, was starting to win some games. But the high school administrators would not allow the reporter to interview Coach Nolan again. The sports writer called the school for an explanation but never got one beyond a concern that he had shown the high school in a negative light. Have you ever seen anything like this? Stewing about their shortcomings, the school officials shut out the miracle in their midst. For if there is anything negative in this story, it is about the society in which we live. One that confronts our disadvantaged youth with underfunded schools, situations of homelessness, inadequate nourishment, and street gangs. We face that ironic inequality again and again, misery in one town next to affluence in the next, from South LA to Laguna Beach, from New Rochelle to Larchmont, from Jericho to Jerusalem. Have you ever seen anything like this? Our church can make a difference. And yet there still is more at work here. This scripture lesson is a story of redemption for all of us. To the cripple who thought he was forever confined to immobility, Jesus simply said, your sins are forgiven. And he walked again. Is it guilt that cripples us? Is it forgiveness we seek? Are we unable to be gracious to ourselves, to allow ourselves to get up from a fall and try again? Perhaps we are that crippled one 
tripped up by our own limitations, immobilized by our own critical thoughts, then let's listen to Jesus. Let's hear the word of God reminding us that the past is forgiven. In our faithfulness, we can try again. Get up, dust yourself off, and move on. Maybe Christ's message for us is about finding the courage and the energy and the willingness to move on in new directions, to revision our church, to become church leaders, to try new ways of welcoming new people to join us. Or perhaps what scripture teaches us today is new ways of thinking about forgiveness as an act of faith, bold new ways of being generous and gracious with others, a way of taking a deep breath and saying, he's doing the best he can do. Or she really did well, even if it's not the way I would do it. Maybe there's some tolerance here, some forbearance with a dose of patience thrown in. Maybe this story of breaking in to find Jesus is permission for us to try new ways of being church, to mentor a new member, nurture a new leader. Maybe this year we'll increase our pledge offer our time, make worship a priority, bring the whole family to church, say yes to new things in your home life, in your heart. It makes a difference. Our doing our best to be Christ's disciples, it means gracious giving, opening our hearts, setting our anxieties aside, and taking a deep breath to say, let's try it to that impossible, crazy, loving new thing. Carrying the crippled man to Christ, people of faith got their friend back on his feet. When they lowered him into the crypt-like room, Jesus raised him from the tomb. And when they thought all he needed was a new pair of legs, Jesus gave him a new life. Let's make our own door through the roof, they said. Let's find a new way to Jesus. Let's do this for the other. And they gave graciously. And in their giving, they received back so much more. Do you see what great wonders our faith can bring? Do you see what grace God has given us? Have you ever seen anything like this? Amen. <coughs>